Hey what's up guys and welcome to the Head Start Lab series Volume 5 on Music Production. Now this is a free tutorial brought to you by the Recording Connection Audio Program, the only program that gets you inside a real studio where you learn from industry professionals on their equipment. In this video series we're going to show you everything that you need to know about music production. And all these videos were made from real tutoring sessions at the Recording Connection. So in addition to learning in a real professional studio, all of our students receive free unlimited tutoring sessions while in the program. Let's go ahead and begin. Hey, what's going on everyone? Eddie Martinez here with Recording Radio Film Connection and welcome back to the Head Start Lab series. Now in this video what I wanted to go ahead and do is show you guys how to keep your Logic Pro X running quickly and smoothly uh, so that you guys don't get any system overloads or anything like that and just basically take care of your your CPU so that you don't crash or anything like that which is kind of a rare occurrence but um, can definitely happen if you're running a slower computer. Uh, so I'm going to go over three things, really simple stuff. Uh, the very first thing that you could do to stop, uh, you know, I guess a crash from happening is uh, simply just go to your preferences, go down to audio, and then go down to uh, the section right here. And as you can see, you have uh, your I.O. or your in and out buffer size. So a lot of times you'll find if it's crashing a lot, that's because you're at its highest setting, uh, you know, a, 1024 uh, a good place to be at is probably like 512 and if you're still receiving like a lot of like system overload notices and things like that you could even move down to 128 and that should probably fix it now if you're working with a lot of MIDI uh, you might still get some crashes because uh, it's a virtual instrument and you're running you know maybe a whole bunch of different plugins with that virtual instrument it could still crash um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to fix that so let's go ahead and ap apply the changes from uh, where it was or where I, I thought it was and that should be fine. Now another thing that you can do is you could simply just go over to this section right here and if you don't see a button uh, for the low latency mode all you need to do is control click over it and then go to customize control bar and display and then right around here you'll see this low latency mode and all you need to do is click on that that's, that sometimes will help with the problem. And then there's a final thing that you could do. Now this this is why I made the videos because they actually moved uh, the area where this uh, particular configuration was. Uh, it used to be in the view mode where you can go ahead and decide the uh, I guess the track header information. Uh, now you'll have to find that over here at the top and you'll go down to configure track header. And you can see a whole bunch of different uh, new items for your track header. Now before we actually get into uh, this menu I want to go ahead and explain what the track header is. This area right here where the uh, I guess the uh, song information or the track information is, this is the track header. So you're going to see the information for the name of the particular track have I guess access to its panning and volume and stuff like that. If you can mute, record, or solo the track, all that. This is the uh, track header information right here. So again, you're, what you're going to want to do is go over, over to the top right here where it says track, scroll down to where you see configure track header, and you'll get a whole new set of options that will pop up right here where, where it says mute, solo, record, and all that other stuff. Uh, the thing that you really want to look for is uh, these buttons right here, either the on off button, that's going to definitely help. As you can see, I, I hit the uh, on off button right here. And if you're working with a track that's just uh, kind of... Uh, has a lot of plugins and is a virtual instrument you might want to either shut that on or off just for a moment so that you can continue working uh, with the song but the thing that's going to be most effective is actually this freeze button so let's go ahead and add it and once you add it all you need to do is hit done and now it's there now what the freeze button does it actually kind of like pre-processes uh, that that music or, or that track so that it doesn't have to process it in real time so it kind of creates a duplicate um, file that it plays uh, with all the effects that are actually on the track um, but without actually processing it in real time when you're actually uh, hitting the play button so it pre-processes it so for example uh, I have this very first track and I want to go ahead and pre-process it so that it wouldn't have to process when I hit play I would hit freeze and then I would hit uh, the play button when I hit the play button it'll then process that uh, before it actually plays and then the next time I hit return and play uh, it'll be pre-processed so that it wouldn't need to and it won't actually you know hit the CPU or the hard drive so hard so let's go ahead and give that a go 
So right there, it's freezing the track all the way to the end of the project. And now uh, this uh, section right here will no longer need to be processed in real time. And you could do that with all the tracks. Now, there is one downside to this. If you are working with a track that has a lot of plugin effects, you'll no longer be able to, uh, you know, uh, open this up. For example, I'm trying to open this up. I can't do that because it's now in freeze mode. As you can see, uh, for you know maybe a second there, you can see that you have a no a no sig symbol type of thing popping up right there. Um, that's because it's no longer available. As soon as I hit unfreeze, though, I can go ahead and reaccess that. As simple as that. So if you're having that problem or you just want to keep your Logic Pro running quickly, these are the simple steps, three simple steps to go ahead and make sure that it's running quickly and efficiently and you're not overloading that hard drive or CPU. As always, I'm Eddie Martinez. Go ahead and leave your comments and thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the video, if this was helpful uh, or not. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys are thinking, so go ahead and do that. And of course, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finances a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.